Hi all, uh, my name is Dr. Jason Sajjabraha. I'm working as an assistant professor in SNS College of Pharmacy. Uh, today I'm going to share a topic about congestive heart failure. Before going to the congestive heart failure, we have to know about what is heart and what's the function of the heart. The heart is a main organ which are in our cardiovascular system and it will help, uh, help to pump the blood throughout the body. So the main uh, function is the pumping blood to our body. So what is the mechanism behind that? First of all, uh, the heart collects blood from the uh, superior and inferior view cover. Uh, and first of all, it has four chain. The heart has a four chamber. First one is the right vent uh, right atrium, right ventricle, and the third one is the left atrium and the left ventricle. So uh, the right ventricle pump the oxygen. The first the right uh, right atrium will receive the blood from the superior and inferior vena cava. Then it will go through the right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps the oxygen from. Blood, uh, from the oxygen poor blood to the lungs and through the pulmonary valve through the pulmonary valve so the lungs will help to uh, give the oxygen to the blood then the blood will uh, carry to the right uh, sorry, left atrium then it will go through the left ventricle and last it will go through the eye so that's the mechanism of the heart so next we are going to see the definition of uh, of congestive heart failure the congestive heart failure or heart failure is a long term condition in which your heart cannot pump blood well enough to meet your body needs so as i earlier said that uh, the blood uh, the heart has a ability to pump blood to our body so it will help give oxygen to the other organs through the blood so uh, in this condition the heart cannot pump well and uh, it can lead to several diseases like cardiac myopathies uh, etc so uh, you uh, because it ha it cannot handle the amount of blood it should and the blood uh, the blood build up in other parts of the body most of the time it collects in your legs and feet in the right side diagram we can see that how the blood uh, occurs and accumulate in our body in the leg hands and the liver the blood will be deposited and it can be lead to swell and also we can see the normal heart and the enlarging heart due to the congestive heart failure the next one is the types of the congestive heart failure the first type is the left side heart failure the left side uh, side sided heart failure occurs when the heart loses its ability to pump the blood uh, this prevents organs from receiving enough oxygen the condition can lead to complication that include right sided heart failure and organ damage which means uh, we know that the left side has a left atrium and a left ventricle and when the left side heart failure occurs it has an inability to pump the blood through the organs so it can damage the organs because our um, our organs needs the blood and oxygen every time so when the left side heart failure occurs we cannot uh, the organs cannot uh, get enough blood uh, in our, in our, from our body uh, the left side heart failure has also two types the first one is a systolic heart failure and the second one is diastolic heart failure the systolic heart failure the bottom pumping chamber of your heart called the left ventricle is too weak to pump blood out your body it is also known, uh, known as the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction so the bottom pumping chamber of your heart has uh, uh, will be too weak to pump the blood to our body so that means the systolic time the systolic heart failure uh, cannot contract uh, our heart properly and the diastolic heart failure means the left heart ventricle the left ventricle is stiff and cannot relax approximately when the diastolic movement means the heart has to be relaxed but at this time when the diastolic heart failure occurs at that time the left ventricle is stiff and cannot relax properly at that time the next one is right sided heart failure the right sided heart failure is the one type of heart failure the which uh, which uh, the right side heart failure is also called as right ventricular 
failure heart failure or right failure okay uh, at this uh, the right side heart failure occurs at that time uh, we know that the right side has right atrium and right ventricle so at that side will be fail to pump the blood to the lungs so at that time uh, we can uh, what we can say the pressure will be formed at the right atrium and right ventricle the uh, as a result the belt builds up in your vein vessels that carry uh, blood from the body back to the heart this build up increases pressure in your veins the pressure pushes fluid out of your veins and into the tissue the fluid build up in your legs abdomen or other areas of your body causes it as we really see the images of this swelling uh, which are occur in our body the next one is the etiology the, the the first one is intrinsic pump failure and the second one is increased work, uh, workload on the heart and the third one is impaired filling of cardiac chamber so we can see one by one the first one is a intrinsic pump failure the intrinsic pump failure can occur uh, can occur through the different types of disease the first one is ischemic heart disease myocarditis metabolic disorder cardiomyopathy arrhythmias these diseases can cause our ventricular muscle weak that we can see in uh, there that when the weakening of the weakening of ventricular muscle okay that it can affect the heart fails to act as a efficient pump okay when the intrinsic pump failure occurs it will weak weakening of our ventricular muscle so it can lead to heart failure in our body the second one is increased workload on the heart the uh, it can be divided into two. the first one increased pressure which due to the systemic and pulmonary artery hypertension valvular disease chronic lung disease uh, the increased volume load uh, the increased low volume load which, which can be uh, which can be due to the valvular insufficiency severe anemia and thyrotoxin this can lead to what increased mechanical load and mecha increased myocardial impact increased myocardial demand okay uh, the increased mechanical load and increased myocardial demand can be due to heart failure the next one is the impaired filling cardiac chamber uh, it is also two type first one is cardiac temporary and the second one is constructive pericarditis in cardiac temporary it means the filling of fluid filling of fluid means we can see the example is the hemopericardium and hyperpericardium the hemopericardium means uh, first of all in, in uh, the heart has three layers uh, endocardium myocardium and pericardium and we can see that hemopericardium means that the pericardium fills with the blood and the hydropericardium means the water filled in the pericardium and the constructive pericarditis means the uh, the construction of pericarditis so this can lead to what increased cardiac output and it can, can lead to heart failure so this is the impaired filling of cardiac chamber one of the etiology of the chf next is the signs and symptoms uh, due to the congestive heart failure we can see in our body pain cough whole body whole body which means diet dizziness fatigue inability to exercise or loss of appetite and uh, respiratory the fast breathing uh, shortness of breath at night shortness of breath on exercise etc the gastrointestinal uh, what what in gastrointestinal the water retention or bloating also common the excessive urination palpitation swollen swollen feet swollen legs or weak so next one is the pathophysiology the pathophysiology of the congestive heart failure okay the first one we can see the right heart uh, right heart failure the right heart failure can also occurs due to the left heart failure and the diseases like core pulmonary right side valvular disease right side myocardial disease pulmonary hypertension these all diseases can lead to what right heart failure so okay the right heart failure first the uh, it affect on the left ventricle by right? residual in left residual blood in left ventricle which means the blood will be 
filled in the left ventricle. Uh, the first, uh, the left ventricle has to uh, has to move or or uh, the move the blood through the aorta and carry it to the different organs. But in this condition, the blood will not go outside; it will accumulate in the left side uh, left side of left ventricle. Uh, because of that, it increases the left atrial pressure and volume. Uh, it will increase the pressure and volume of the left atrium. So this can lead to an increased pressure in pulmonary venous circulation, and uh, it, has, it can be next affect to the pulmonary atrial pressure. The hypertension will be found on the pulmonary atrial veins, and next it will be affected increase in uh, next this, this pressure will affect on the right ventricle. So this can lead to a systemic venous congestion and the peripheral edema. So we, in our mind we have to feel that this right side heart failure is a backward condition. Okay, this back it is a backward condition. You, we can see that the uh, first one it is affected on the left left ventricle, then it affects on the left ventricle, and next the pulmonary veins, pulmonary arterial veins, and the, the, the last one is right ventricular pressure. Course. Okay, the second one is the left heart failure. Uh, the left heart failure occurs due to the ischemic heart disease, myocarditis, valvular heart disease, restrictive pericarditis can be occur what left heart failure. So this uh, left heart failure occurs uh, due to this type of disease. Okay, uh, it can lead to what decreased cardiac output, which means the blood flow, blood flow will be decreased. Then tissue anoxia. Tissue anoxia means uh, the tissue won't or the organs won't get uh, enough blood, uh, enough oxygen rich blood, and this leads to uh, decreased renal perfusion. First of all, it main uh, the, when the left heart failure occurs, it mainly affects the kidney. So the kidney, uh, kidney that is the uh, re decreased renal perfusion. It can lead to what? The when the blood flow decreased on kidney, it will produce a renin. This renin, uh, uh, this renin will enter into the blood and go to the liver. And in liver, there is a, a, a called angiotensinogen. This angiotensinogen is converted. Uh, is converted to the angiotensin one. Angiotensin one. This angiotensin one is again converted to angiotensin two due because of the ACE, which is an angiotensin converting enzyme. So this can lead to what vasoconstriction and sodium and water retention. This can lead to a pulmonary congestion and edema. So the left heart failure, which is the uh, forward condition. So the self care we have to take for the congestive heart failure is the physical exercise, quitting smoking and a healthy diet, proper lifestyle. These are the self care we have to take when we have the congestive heart failure. So that's all. Uh, this is all about the congestive heart failure. Thank you for listening and please subscribe our channel.